I have stood in this very spot on a number of occasions talking to you about lightweight black Canyon bicycles. But this one in particular, the ultimate CF Evo Disc, a typically memorably named bike, is different for two reasons. Now the first of these, and it's not the obvious one, is that this bike is actually a usable bike. Although it is a very, very top end build and it comes with a typically top end price of about £9,000, the components used on this bike are actually usable. Previous top end lightweight canyons have used some really silly parts like, you know, 19mm uh, time trial tubs or unusably light wheels. And with the exception of maybe this alarmingly flexible saddle, this bike actually uses pretty normal parts overall. Now the second thing of note, and it is the more obvious of the two, is the fact that this bike comes with disc brakes. Yes, it is possible to build a lightweight bike with disc brakes. When we originally got the press pack for this bike, it was claimed that the new bike weighed sub six kilos, but in typical bike industry fashion, Canyon have been a little bit sneaky with that one. And this size medium bike weighs in at a admittedly incredibly impressive 6.04 kilos. So not sub six, but we're getting pretty damn close. And that, yeah, that's a pretty good figure for a medium bike. To me, all the fanfare that's gone around this bike and the fact it has discs kind of marks the point where ultra-like disc bikes are probably going to become the norm going forward. Canyon's typically quite abreast of trends and I think if you're looking at the broader market, I think it's almost a certainty that in the months and years to come we're going to see more and more of these bikes coming out from other mainstream manufacturers. So I think that the arrival of ultra-light disc bikes, which in some ways rival the weights of traditional production, and that's the key word here, production rim brake bikes, is, is probably coming pretty soon. There are obviously going to be other examples you can point to from all sorts of weird little niche manufacturers who are making crazy, crazy light rim brake bikes, but those aren't the bikes that most people are buying. Most people are buying bikes from the likes of Canyon or Giant or Specialized, and to see these bigger brands starting off with Canyon offering an ultralight disc bike, I think this is a real watershed moment and perhaps this is the time I can say RIP rim brakes. Whether or not you're happy or sad about that, and I'm almost fed up of asking the question because I've done it about 2,000 times in videos. Either way, let us know in the comments. So what makes a 6.04 kilo disc brake bike? Well, I can tell you one thing that's certainly not apparent on this bike is a flashy paint job. I'm gonna poke fun at Canyon here because, you know, it is possible to make a lightweight bike that isn't black and all black. It'd be quite nice to see some fun and pop into the uh, market again, but nonetheless, I guess it's a crowd pleaser. Starting with the obvious thing, we've got SRAM Red ETAP Axis Group Set. Now this is pretty much the lightest group set you can get on the market at the minute, so it's no surprise to see this here, but it is interesting that Canyon have gone with a, a sensible low end gear with a 3528 combo there. This is obviously a bike which is designed for climbers, so it makes sense to have that slightly easier gear overall. In terms of the wheels, as I mentioned before, previous ultralight bikes from Canyon and most others have used uh, tubular wheels. What's interesting on this one is that they've gone for a set of DT Swiss 1100 25 year edition kind of commemorative clincher wheels. Now these are shod with some very lightweight continental time trial tires, which are obviously gonna give up a little bit of puncture protection over your kind of more hardy clincher, but nonetheless, they are a far more practical thing to live with than tubs. In another nod towards practicality, the tires are also 25 mil wide. We all know by now that wider tires are better on the road and the days of 23 mils and below are thankfully far beyond us. So yes, good job Canyon for specking something actually usable. In terms of the finishing kit, we have a very lightweight Schmolke seat post and that's topped with a Cell Italia C59 saddle, which as I mentioned before, even squeezing it in the stand is alarmingly flexible. So that's one I'd personally be swapping out quite quickly. And in terms of the cockpit, we have Canyon's CP20 one-piece cockpit. Now it's not just a super light build, which goes into making a super light bike, and the frame set itself has also seen some updates compared to the previous version of the Top End Ultimate. And this bike, in an unspecified size to be fair, is claimed to weigh just 641 grams for the frame, which is frankly ridiculous. 
One thing that is worth mentioning is that Canyon made a big song and dance about the fact it's integrated the front derailleur mount into the frame, saving a whopping seven grams. Elsewhere on the bike, they've swapped the traditional steel or alloy hardware in favor of titanium bolts, and that has saved three and a half grams. That three and a half grams, of course, will make all the difference in the world when you're killing yourself on the next big climb. In terms of the layup, Canyon claims to have used all manner of magic carbon layup to make the bike just that little bit lighter than the previous generation. And the ultra high modulus fibers used in various parts of this frame are claimed to weigh 10% less per square meter than that used in the other version of the Ultimate. I'll be totally honest, as an engineering marvel, this bike is a delightful thing to wonder at. I mean, the fact we've reached this stage where with a production bike, a production disc bike, we're getting down to just above six kilos is remarkable. And it's a real watershed moment. I really, really think this is gonna be the beginning of the next generation of ultralight road bikes. If I had the money, and incidentally, that is 9,099 pounds, which astonishingly is 2,700 pounds less than Canyon's most expensive bike. Anyway, if I had the money, would I buy this bike? Probably not. To me, it's just another really lightweight black bike. And maybe if it came in hot pink, I could have my mind changed. But for the time being, it's not setting my heart alight. But that's not what this bike is about. Like I said, it's a sea change moment, but what do you think? Is this the time where discs are gonna take over? Are we gonna see this heralding of all sorts of new disc technology, which brings those weights closer and closer to rim brakes? Or am I totally wrong? Are the old rim squidgers gonna hold a place in your heart for the rest of time? As always, please leave your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon so whenever we upload a video, you'll get a notification. Goodbye.